In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to create soft, flattering light for your portrait photography. We're gonna talk about four different ways to create very soft light that makes your model look great. And obviously you'll be working with a much better looking model, but for now I'll have to do. And I'm gonna throw in some little DIY hack ideas using objects you may have laying around the house to create nice soft light with lights as simple as a phone light or if you have a speed light. And I'll also give you some DIY hacks using household items that you may just have laying around the house to turn a hard light into a soft light. For example, you're using a phone and you wanna make it a very soft light, you're using a speed light. We'll get into all of that in this video. So let's jump right into it. If you've ever watched my lighting tutorials in the past, you'll know that I have this fun little toy that I call my light on a stick. And I recently just upgraded this little light to a Pixel Liber RGB video light. And this thing is a lot of fun. I'm gonna have a link to it down in the description below. If you wanna make your own light on a stick using just a little LED light and a little, this is an off-brand Gorillapod. You can buy these for pretty cheap. I will have all of the links down below in the description so you can make your own little light on a stick. I will also have a dedicated review to this light. I love it so far. Have to thank Pixel for sending me these lights. I got three of them, absolutely a blast. But again, I will have a full dedicated review on this and I'll tell you guys exactly what I think about these lights. But for this tutorial, we're gonna be using my little light on a stick, which I know you guys have said you liked in the past. So we'll be using this to demonstrate some of our portrait lighting techniques. And let's start off this tutorial by talking about the difference between hard and soft light. I'll go ahead and I'll shut this off for now. So the difference between hard and soft light is really pretty simple. And we cannot talk about light without also talking about shadows. So if we go ahead and we look at some of the areas of the human face where shadows occur, you'll see under the nose, under the chin, kind of around the ears, the eyes is a big one, especially if you have, like me, bags under the eyes or multiple sets of bags under the eyes for a lot of lack of sleep. So these are the areas you're gonna look to see if you have hard or soft light. In this scene in particular, I set up a very soft, very soft looking light setup compared to my typical YouTube recording studio. Have a light over here, have a light over here, have a light behind me. And if we especially take a look at this gradient right here, we have a very soft light behind me and it has a very large gradient. That is how you tell the difference between hard light and soft light. Hard light has a very small gradient and it's going to be a very fast transition between shadow and light. Whereas softer light, it's going to be a much wider transition, a larger gradient, and you're gonna go from your shadow to your light it's going to be a much softer, more gradual transition. That's really the difference between hard light and soft light. So let's really get into how do we create soft light? We see hard light is everywhere around us from the sun to street lights, headlights, the typical lights that you have in your house, they're almost all hard lights. How do we turn those into soft lights? Let's find out. One of the first ways that you can create a soft light is to have a large light source. Large light sources give off soft light. For example, let's look at the sun. The sun is a very hard light source. That's because while the sun is very big, the sun is also very, very far away, which makes it a tiny light source way off in the sky. So on a sunny day, you have very hard light very hard shadows in the eyes, under the chin, not very flattering. But on an overcast day, when the clouds are blocking the sun, you have very soft light. That's because the sun is being diffused by the clouds and the clouds are creating a huge light source above your subject, creating those very nice soft shadows. One way to create a soft light, if you happen to have a very hard light on you, is bouncing your light. That is essentially taking your light and bouncing it off one thing and onto your subject. For example, in here, I'm using bounce lights with my LED light panels, which are typically a hard light source. 
are about this big. If I take those and I bounce those across a 12, 13 foot ceiling, I'm creating essentially a much larger light source thus a much softer light source. So that's one of the tricks I'm using here in my studio is I have an LED panel right here. I have an LED panel behind me and another LED panel as a backlight here. Again, all bouncing off my white ceiling to create one giant, big, pretty much 12 foot light source. So bouncing your light is a great way to do that. You'll notice that again, talking about bigger versus smaller light sources, what are soft boxes? Soft boxes create very soft light. And they do that because you have a very tiny bulb inside of your flash or your strobe. And what you're doing is that tiny bulb is a very hard light source. You're putting a big sheet in front of it so that light goes through this. And you're essentially making that light source larger. And by making it larger, you're making it softer. So let's take a look at a couple DIY things you can do around your home to create a larger light source. So the first little trick to creating a larger light source that we already talked about is using some bounce light. Taking your hard light source, such as a speed light or a phone light, for example, you can absolutely use a phone light to light your portraits. Bounce that light off the ceiling and you can see here that creates very soft light bouncing off this large ceiling onto my face and that looks great. Another little hack that I've seen a lot is using little plastic bag and putting it around your light. So for example, we can use our little light on a stick. We'll turn this on. And again, when you're diffusing a light or your light is going through something, you are going to have to turn up the brightness on that light. So you can see this light is fairly bright on my face. And if I were to put it just directly into this bag, which creates a larger light source, we're essentially creating a giant soft box. You can see how soft this is on my face, but I will turn this up ever so slightly so that you can see the effect a little bit better. We're creating a giant soft, look at how soft that light is on my face. That looks fantastic. Quick little hack. These are free at most stores. Some stores charge for them now, but they're so darn cheap. Again, you can throw this on a continuous light. You can throw it on a speed light. And again, let's look at the difference between super soft and then again looking at our shadows that light gets a little bit harder as it gets smaller look at how soft that light is that's a great little hack to go ahead chuck that bag on the floor back to our slightly harder light source this isn't too terribly hard another thing you can use is a t-shirt or a pillowcase that works essentially a lot like a soft box if you were to open up this t-shirt like this, take a look and put your light behind it, you just created a very, very large, soft light source. So again, hard light, very soft light, and we're creating that soft light by making our light source bigger. So let's go on to the next way to create a soft light. So the second way you create a soft light is to move your light closer to your subject. That means it will fill in all the little cracks, all the little shadows, and will be a very soft light. So the closer, we'll use my light on a stick again, that we have our light to our subject's face, because the face is what we want to make nice and soft. We want to fill in all those little shadows again, make your portrait very flattering. The closer our light is to our subject, you can see the softer the light is going to be. It's also going to be a little bit brighter, so we may have to turn down the brightness of our light just a touch about right here now you can see very soft we're filling in all these shadows looks great very soft and again if we move our light farther away it's going to create harder shadows and as we move our light away we're going to have to turn up the brightness of our light so i'll turn this up and i will move my light farther away here but you can see now look at these shadows going on on this side very, very hard shadows. Kind of trying to see in my video monitor what you guys are seeing. But in the eyes here, hard shadows. Look at under the chin here. Very hard shadows the farther this light gets away from the subject, me. So again, we'll move the light closer to our subject. We will turn the brightness again way down so we're not completely overexposing our subject. We'll turn that down to about 1%. 
This light is very bright still at 1%, great for filling in the shadows. But again, we're filling in all those shadows on the face, creating a nice soft light when it's closer to the subject. So if you have light source that you can move your subject closer to, that will create a dramatically softer and more flattering portrait light. So the third way that we can create or give the perception of a softer light is by using angles, playing with the direction of your light and the angles of your light. So let's go ahead, turn on our light on a stick and we'll throw our light right in front here and it's gonna be kind of on our axis between our camera and our subject. And this is a very direct or very acute angle using this light. Again, it is filling in all the shadows on my face and we have the perception of softer light because those shadows are being filled. Now this is a very direct light. If we take our light and we move it on to more of an obtuse angle over here, you can see we're starting to split the light down the middle in portrait lighting. That is called split lighting simply because we're splitting the light. We have light over here, shadow over here. And because of the way that the human face works, the form of the human face, it's not a perfect circle. So we are creating the perception that our light is harder because of this more obtuse angle over here with our light source. So again, we have light on this side, but we are creating shadow on this side just by using the angle of our light source to do that. So again, if we wanna create a softer light, again, just play with the angle of your light or the angle of your model's face. So if, again, you have a model by a window and you want their face fully soft, fully lit, you may want them looking into the light like this, where you can still break that axis between your subject's face and the camera lens. I'm gonna talk about that a lot, the axis of your camera lens. When you break that and have your subject looking towards the light source or the window, the front of the face is gonna become much softer. Again, just play with those angles and see what looks good to create that flattering soft portrait light for your subject. So remember earlier in the video when I said you really can't talk about light without talking about shadows, that brings us to our fourth way of creating soft light and that is to fill in the shadows. We are minimizing that ratio between our very dark shadows and our very bright lights and that will again give the appearance of soft light. There are some days where you're just not gonna be able to fight that hard light. For example, you're shooting out on a sunny day in the middle of the day at noon. You are just stuck with that hard light. How can we defeat that hard light? Well, that's by fighting back with more light and filling in the shadows and decreasing that ratio of the very bright light to the very dark shadows. So we can see here, if I just take my light, I can fill in some of the shadows down here and give the perception of a softer light. Now we can just go around, you can see, move this light around, and fill in some of those shadows and create very soft light on our subject's face. Now be careful when you're doing this, you don't wanna create very flat lighting, you still need shadows to create form and give your subject form and a three-dimensional look to their face. You don't wanna create a very flat looking face. So don't completely nuke your shadows and eliminate them completely. We do want shadows. We just want, remember, those soft shadows, those soft gradients and soft lighting. So another example, let's turn this light way up, make it super bright. And we're gonna pretend like this is our sun. This is a very bright, terrible sun. This is about what the sun looks like at noon. And we're, you can see the light is far away. The light is small and is on a very, very obtuse angle to my face and the axis here over 90 degrees. This looks pretty rough. This is not very flattering for portrait lighting. Again, it is all subjective, but this is very hard light. I don't love this. This is our very bright sun. Remember a minute ago when we talked about bouncing, we can also bring in a very small bounce card to help fill in some of these shadows. So let's move our sun a little bit farther away here. Again, hard shadows. And we bring in a nice soft bounce and you can see the shadows getting filled in. Bounce, no bounce. Again, filling in the harsh shadows. And if you're taking a fairly tight portrait with let's say an 85 millimeter and it's from the shoulders up, you're not even gonna see 
your bounce card down here. You can use a piece of poster board. You can use a very simple gray card reflector like this that I will have linked down in the description. This is super cheap. I think it's like 10, 12 bucks. Almost anyone can afford these. You can use reflector, a bounce card. You can use a notebook or a piece of poster board if you need to. Those are some little DIY things that you can do to get around the cost. But again, just fill in those shadows. Let's say you have a very hard direct light on this side and just fill it in. And again, it's gonna be playing with that angle of your bounce by filling in those shadows. So shadows, almost no shadows, and we're creating a much softer light, softer gradients by lowering that ratio of our light to our shadows. So again, we can use a little light, like this little pixel RGB light here on a sunny day just to fill in those shadows, or we can use something as simple as a little bounce card, a piece of paper, a piece of poster board, and even in our very soft light here, we can still fill in our shadows. And you can see, again, no bounce, a little bit of bounce. Again, very, very soft light, but we still have definition. You never want to lose all of your shadows again because you lose that definition. But just play with your angles, play with how far or close and how much you want your shadows filled in. And those are the four ways you can easily create soft light for more flattering portraits. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, be sure to share it with a friend that may also love portrait photography so they can learn something. And if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more of my run and gun portrait lighting tips, tricks, and techniques. And until next time, get out and go shoot.